before we get started, I need everybody to look at my shirt. It's Mario coming out of a pocket, and I'm obsessed with it. I got it from the thrift store, so everybody who says thrift stores suck, you're wrong because you can find gems like this. <laughs> It's Jay and today I'm here with my June wrap up for 2019. I ended up reading a total of 14 books so I'm going to be splitting this up into two parts. These are the first seven books that I read for this month so without further ado let us get started. So the first book that I read this month was The Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a woman named Leah Stevens who was forced to quit her job at a Boston newspaper. She's feeling a bit down on her luck until she runs into her ex-roommate Emmy Gray and they spontaneously decide that they're going to move together to Pennsylvania and that is when Leah becomes a school teacher. When a body turns up at the lake near Leah's house and her roommate vanishes, she starts to question how much she really knows about Emmy. So with the help of Kyle Donovan, who is the cop assigned to the case, Leah needs to uncover the secrets that Emmy may be hiding and what they mean. So unlike a lot of other reviewers, this was my first Megan Miranda book so I didn't have a lot of expectations going into it but that being said I wasn't overly blown away by this book. I'm usually a huge fan of unreliable narrators but something about Leah just fell very flat for me. I wasn't invested in her story at all but I was very invested in finding out more about Emmy and what that was all about. I did like how fast-paced this book was. There didn't really seem to be a lull in the story at any time, but I was not a big fan of the ending. I feel like it was a very easy way out and a little bit of a cop-out in my opinion, but it was still a fun read, so like I said, 3.5. The next book that I read is The Field Guide to a North American Teenager by Ben Phillip, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I actually really like this one. It follows Norris, who is a young black French Canadian who moves from Montreal to Austin, Texas with his mom. He is not exactly happy with this move, but he makes a deal with his mother to at least try for a little while. Upon arriving, Norris meets pretty much every high school stereotype that you can think of and records it all in a notebook that his guidance counselor gave him on the first day. Along the way he meets a couple of new friends and a girl that he tries to win the heart of. This book was very quick to read and I really liked the Canadian jokes because usually in books a lot of the ones that I read are American so they make American jokes and I'm Canadian. I don't understand these jokes. I don't understand your political system and all that jazz. So I actually got these jokes and it was a great time because I could actually laugh and be like, <laughs> I get it. I really like Norris as a main character. He was very snarky and sarcastic, which I personally love in main characters. I also love his relationship that he had with his mother. She was a huge highlight of this book for me. I also really love the friendships that Norris made while in Austin. I think that Liam and Matt were just such little sweet cinnamon rolls and they were so cute and I really loved learning more about them as the story progressed. I was not a fan of the love interest. I did not want Norris and her to end up together. I did not ship it. She pissed me off. She was just such a little player and Norris deserved better, okay? That's my opinion. I'm also not a huge fan of the ending, which is why I gave it four out of five stars. It was just very unsatisfying to me, so I wish it was different. I know that it's not like a sequel, but I wish there was a sequel because Norris deserved better. The next book that I have, you guys are going to be so proud of me for finally reading. It is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I feel like I don't need to give a synopsis of Throne of Glass because everybody and their mother has read this. I'm just very late to the bandwagon. But it follows Selena Saradothian who is a world-class assassin. She ends up being captured, she spends time in a prison. She ends up competing in a series of trials competition thing to become the king's champion, which means that she will be his personal assassin, and it's like the story of that. It took me a very long time to get into this story. I feel like it was very slow at the beginning, and I was not feeling it, but eventually I became very invested in these characters and the entire plot. The one huge complaint that I have on this book is that I wish it was more of a focus on the actual tournament rather than the love triangle between Selena, Dorian, and Kale. 
although like I am a fan of both of the boys. I liked Dorian because he was like a grand old time and when him and Selena were together I was laughing a lot but then I also like Kale because you could tell that he truly wanted what was best for Selena so like I'm conflicted. I can't decide which boy I want her to end up with. I'm hoping that it becomes more clear in the next books but I guess we'll see when we continue on with the series. I was not the biggest fan of Selena. I thought she was very funny, but I didn't really see how she could be named the world's greatest assassin. There was just no time in the book where you were very confident in her title of the greatest assassin. It was kind of more of how is she still alive at this point? I don't understand. I was a big fan of Nehemia. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I really enjoyed her character. And Cataline can choke. That's all I have to say about this book, but I'm very excited to get on with the series. The next one is another book that you guys are probably going to be very proud that I finally picked up. It is The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare and other authors. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is like the short story collection of Magnus Bane from the Shadow Hunters world. I was so disappointed by this book. Magnus Bane is my favorite character. I love him so much and I was so excited to pick this up. I was convinced it was going to be five stars because Magnus Bane. But honestly, I was bored through most of it. The stories did get better as we progressed on and I did really like how Magnus started off very immature and you could like literally see him growing into the wise little warlock he is today. But like I said, it just fell short for me. The second half of the book was what brought my rating up. I really liked being able to see more of Magnus Bane and his relationships with side characters like Raphael. I thought that was really cool. I think my favorite story was one of the last ones where Alec and Magnus went on their first date. It was so cute, but like I said, I was a little bit disappointed in this one. The next one that I have I am very conflicted about. It's This Darkness Mine by Mindy McGuinness, and I end up giving this a three out of five stars. It follows Sasha Stone, who basically has her entire life planned out until she discovers that she actually absorbed her twin in the womb and now her twin is trying to take over her life by controlling her heart. So... Interesting concept. I had very high expectations for this book because Mindy McGuinness wrote The Female of the Species, which was one of my all-time favorite books when I read it. But that being said, I have no idea what I just read. Like, I am so confused, but very intrigued at the same time. I'm a huge fan of unreliable narrators, like I've said, and so Sasha Stone was very interesting to me. She was just a terrible person. Like, she was not nice, and there was no way that you could root for her, but I needed to keep reading to see what terrible thing she was going to do next. I liked Isaac as a character, but he felt very disjointed to the story. Like, I didn't really see why he was there. It kind of just felt like he needed to be thrown in as a plot point, but there, like, I don't understand the relationship. I don't understand why he fell for Sasha so fast. It just didn't make sense to me. Half the time I was very engrossed in the story and I wanted to know what was going on, but then the other half I was just confused and wanted it to make even a little bit of sense. So I'm very conflicted with my rating, which is why I'm just giving it a very average three stars because I'm just so confused. The next book I have is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the To All The Boys I Loved Before series. I've never completed this trilogy I wanted to read this since the movie is being filmed right now. I was a really big fan of the first one, but this one honestly didn't blow me away. I think that Laura Jean was still very naive in this one, and I was hoping for more character development since I didn't see a lot of it in the first book, but there really wasn't any in this one either. I was not a huge fan of Peter in this book, although I loved him in the first one. He was a bit of an idiot in this one, and I just could not get behind him and his motivations for the things that he was doing. He's an idiot, Genevieve sucks, and um, Team John Ambrose. I also want to say Stormy, one of the side characters, was a huge highlight for me in this book. I'm also still a huge fan of Kitty. Love them so much. I'm also still a big fan of the family dynamics in this book. I just love watching a healthy 
you know, present family. Overall, like, super cute, fluffy, you know, what you're gonna get from Jenny Han. And I'm pretty excited to pick up the final book in this trilogy and finally finish it. And then the final book that I read for this part one of the wrap-up was Tiger Lily by Jodi Lynn Anderson, and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It's basically the story of before Wendy Darling when Peter was in love with Tiger Lily. I really really wanted to like this story because it's told from Tinkerbell's perspective which I thought was a really cool concept but it definitely fell very short for me. I didn't care for any of the characters. I didn't feel connected to any of them. I didn't care what happened to literally any of them. The only two characters that I was actually invested in was TikTok who is Tiger Lily's adopted father and Pine Sap who is Tiger Lily's best friend, but I would not actually call him a best friend because she treated him like poop, but it's fine. I think that the pacing of the story was extremely slow. Honestly, I don't really think anything happened in the book. I was just bored for most of it. I was also just not a fan of Peter in this book, which was very saddening to me because I love Peter Pan, but in this one, I just wanted to punch him in the face. So this book was not for me. I did not like it very much, but I love Tinkerbell, so 2.5. All right, guys, so that was my part one June wrap up for 2019, the first seven books that I read this month. Come back later for part two. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye.